Just run right in there, you retiree. Look at him barreling around that curve. I'm getting in his way. I don't even have a job to pick up up here. I'm going up here to see if there's a job available for me to do. I bought this trailer, and now I'm looking for a job to use it. I am Old Guy Gamer. This is American Truck Sim. I am in the new DLC, Arkansas. Using my new trailer, trying to find some logs to carry somewhere for someone. There's some logs. Can I carry your logs, mister? I'd like to take them somewhere. Where would you like to take them? I know wherever you want them to go. Will you pay me? Please pay me to take your logs. Let's see how logging works. Uh, we got a new event for World of Trucks that says your trips in Arkansas have to be 100 miles long. So we won't pick the shortest. Although the per mile rates for logs is pretty stellar. I don't know why it's giving me GPS directions to go up there and turn around, but the green flag is way up there where the GPS doesn't go, so... Alright, whatever. We're gonna go where the load is. Uh, that was my one complaint when I started seeing videos on this Arkansas DLC, is the soil is not quite right. If you ever drive through Arkansas, there is a marked difference in the soil in Arkansas compared to everywhere else around it. The soil is very red in Arkansas. And even if the rocks are a little bit more red than the normal stuff in ATS, it's not quite as red as it should be for Arkansas. Oh no, I'm not going to skip the loading. That's what I came here for. It's going to be one of those videos where I do a bunch of talking before I ever pick up the load, and then I'm going to be driving and not have anything to talk about. Oh, I don't even have to press enter or nothing. It just automatically starts it. Back up and see it. Now you will notice that uh, the logging pickup isn't exactly smooth. It kind of clips through the logs as it picks them up. And then here when it drops them off, it's not smooth dropping them off either. It kind of just clicks into stacked position. It doesn't really drop them. As awesome as this is, I wonder if we'll see some mods that make it even better. Whoever's doing the modding out there, thank you for what you do, because you make this game better. But I have no idea how you do what you do, and it was a skill I wish I had. Kind of like playing the guitar. I've been wanting to learn how to play guitar for decades, and I've never once put any effort into it. If I would have just started decades ago when I first thought of it, I would have learned how to play guitar by now. I could probably say the same thing about learning to mod. If I learned to do it... I mean, I've only wanted to learn how to mod in the last two or three years or so. Mostly when I have an idea for a skin for this game, or a, I don't know how to create mods, I don't know how they do it, but I wonder how hard it would be to learn. Do you have to have a basis in coding before you ever get started modding? Does that make it easier to get started? I don't know how it works. I first got interested in modding because my father-in-law owned a trucking company called Express Systems. And I used to work for that company when I got out of the army. He gave me a job so I could land on my feet. And, uh... He passed away in 2018. I wish I could honor his uh, legacy, his trucking legacy, I guess I should say. It's not his, it's not who he was, it's what he did. But it would be cool to honor his legacy and come up with a skin that says uh, Express Systems in the game where I could drive his company truck. That would be so cool. I would do that in a heartbeat if I had that skill set to create that mod. I asked around for the family, I asked around to the family for a picture of his company logo and I could never no one ever had a picture of his company logo like who thinks to do that take a picture of your company logo 
So now I remember what the logo looked like, but I can't recreate it to do it. Oh, I hit the microphone. Party fell. I was trying to give myself as much space as I needed, and I didn't really need that much space. I made it by a mile. But I was saying, I don't have a picture of my father-in-law's trucking company logo to even think of learning how to create a skin for that company because I need the logo. I have a jacket that he made for my wife. It's got her name on it and it has the Express Systems logo on the back. So I do have a faded version of that logo, but... I haven't even attempted to try and make it more clear. I would have to put it into a fixing program and imagine with AI, it would probably be easier nowadays than it used to be, but we used to drive a 95 Ford Aeromax. That was one of the trucks we had in the company. I love that truck. That was really cool. And then we had a owner operator who had his own truck. I don't even remember what Keith had. He had an older truck that only he drove, not a company truck. And then David drove the Ford Aeromax. I drove, we had a straight truck, a Freightliner FL60. It wasn't the smallest FL50, but I don't think it was the biggest FL70 either. I think it was an FL60. And then we had a little truck. It was like a cube box truck based on a Dodge Ram pickup chassis. I think that was all the trucks we had. The Ford Aeromax was the workhorse. It was the one that did the most work. And then, of course, the owner-operator truck did a lot of work, too, but the other two were to supplement the two big trucks. I would love to uh, bring his trucking company legacy to this game. I, I can't even tell you how much that would mean to me. I, I imagine if I showed that in this game to his family... They probably wouldn't even... I don't think they would care. I mean, I've tried doing stuff like set to music for the family before, and they just didn't seem to get what I was trying to do, like create some sort of in-memoriam. But, man, it would be so cool to drive around in a truck with his company name and logo on it. He uh, gave me my chance. I still remember to this day when I was in the Army, I was getting out, you know, a few months away from getting out. Um... I called him up. I was at work, working a working post fourteen at Site R where I worked, and um, I said, "Hey, I'm going to be getting out of the army soon." And I was just wondering if there was a place in your company for me. I'm looking for work, and you own a family business, and I'd like to help make it bigger and better. And if I could be a part of it, I'd like to be. If you have room for me, and he said, "Yeah, absolutely. Come on in." Come to work. So that was a load off my shoulders as I was getting out of the army, knowing that I had a job that could at least help me transition out of the army well. I took my ETS leave uh, in April, I want to say, of 2000. So I started working with him in April. I got out of my last official day in the army was in May of 2000. And I worked with him as soon as I got, as soon as I started working in the trucking company, I realized I'm like, as much as I'd like to help the family, there is no money in it. I was not making ends meet hardly at all. And of course I was a new truck driver. He couldn't pay me much. Not still, you know, still having to learn how to drive a truck, but I wasn't making enough money. And I saw that there were civilian jobs, the equivalent to what I did in the military that were making, well, I'm a cop. I mean, it's, it is what it is. I was a cop in the military MP. And when I looked in the newspaper and saw how much cops were making, I was just like, it's not even comparable to driving a truck. It's like twice as much money. And uh, I mean, it was nice having weekends off and holidays off when the truck, when the trucking business was closed down for, you know, holidays and weekends that was nice to have that schedule but I will take twice as much money to work holidays and weekends thank you so that's what I did 
I told him in, I want to say late May, like after working him for a month, I'm like, hey, I don't know if I can stay doing this. And I showed him the ad. I'm like, the first ad I found was for a little town called Libertyville. And I showed him how much they were making. I was like, look, I love this company, but I have way more potential to make way more money doing this that I know I can do. I, I knew I could do police work. I was already trained in the army to do police work. I'm like, do you see why I'm headed this way? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, I, he's like, for me to pay you that much would take you 10 years to make that much in trucking company. He's like, you're going to get little raises over, you know, over time. And he's like, you're married to my daughter. Of course, I want you to focus on, you know, building the life that's good for her as much as anything. So he understood why within a month of me starting or two months of me starting that I was like, I got to go do this. I had put police work behind me. I wasn't going to do it anymore because of not liking it in the military. I was ready to move on and just be a trucker. But the money was too big of a draw to turn down. So I went and I tested. And I want to say that was May. I saw the ad for Libertyville Police Department. And I went and tested. And it took about six months from the orientation to the testing and getting hired. I got hired by the police department in on January 2nd of 2001. And I got my final paycheck from the trucking company that same week. But he's the one who gave me my... He gave me a chance. I mean, he didn't have to. He could have said, oh, you know, the trucking company is kind of a... I don't know how much we can expand right now. He could have made an excuse, and I would have believed him. That truck is still turned over over there. See it? From that block when we came into town. He could have made an excuse and said, you know, I don't have room for you in the company. I got four drivers and four trucks. That's all I have room for. Um, but... Uh, he made room for me in his company, gave me a job to help me transition out of the army, and, you know, just like parents, man, they give you so much. That's where we're going, dude. Anyways, like parents always do, they give you so much, and how often do you ever get a chance to repay the things that parents do for you? Um, I, you know... I think about the things that my parents did for me. I can never repay them for the things they've done for me to help me become an adult and responsible and the amazing person that I am today. Haha. Ha. All I can do is thank them profusely and live well and pass it on to my kids. I don't know if that's the best thing to do or the best way to honor them and thank them for the way they've given to me. I'm talking about both my parents and my in-laws. But that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take care of my kids. And I know that my daughters have married good guys or are on their way to marrying good guys. One's married, one's engaged. Um, but as often as I can, I'm going to be buying dinners. I remember, you know, my parents bought me so many dinners at restaurants in the past that was just one of those things where we'd go out to dinner and they would reach for the check. There was no question like, oh yeah, they're paying for dinner. That's cool. Thank you so much. And I did pay for dinners when my parents, when I got a chance, but that chance doesn't come up very often, but I get the chance to buy dinners for my kids way more often. So I will never hesitate. I always want to pay that check for my kids and their soon to be spouses and one day families because as much as I love them and I want to do that for them I'm really doing it to honor my parents who did that for me I've been playing this game for years since maybe 2018 or 2017 I forget exactly when but or no it would have been 2019 when I built the computer so I've been playing this game for five years and maybe it's time for me to take seriously the the good I could do for just myself to make me feel good about making a skin for that trucking company just to kind of honor his trucking legacy there is more trucking legacy in my family than just my father-in-law giving me a job coming out of the army though I had an uncle that was a truck driver as far as I know he was the only truck driver on my dad's side of the family but he drove a, a cab over like this I don't know if it was a Kenworth or a Peterbilt or a White or an International I don't know what it was but he drove a cab over truck 
over the road. And I remember him telling stories about being in New Orleans and being in all these places all over the country. And uh, he gave us a ride in his truck once, and I got to sit in the back, you know, on that little bed right back there when my legs spread over the engine hump. You know, one left leg on the left side and right leg on the right side, and him taking us on a ride. And it wasn't even to go anywhere. It was when we were living in Southern Illinois. He just was there and visited and gave us kids a ride in his truck. A mile down the road and back, whatever it was, I don't remember. But... Uh, that's one of the reasons I love these cab over trucks so much is because it reminds me of when my, when my uncle was a truck driver. And my uncle David is still living. He's one of the last remaining siblings of my dad. I think they're down to three siblings still living. Uh, my dad was the youngest, not the youngest, he was one of the youngest of 11 kids. And it's only the youngest kids that are still living. So my uncle David also deserves a little bit of his trucking legacy to be remembered in a game like this. I don't really, he, I don't remember if he had a different, I think he was one of those truckers where his trucking company name was just DL Evans Trucking or something like that. It was just his name as a trucking company. Um, I kind of remember that from the side of the truck. I should probably ask around and find out. That's That would be easy enough legacy to remember and honor because I could just call my mom and be like, hey, find out from Uncle David what his trucking company name was find out what kind of truck he drove because he didn't drive truck forever as far as I know I mean I was born in 75 he was trucking back then when we lived in southern Illinois so let's see 10 years later probably when I was 10 I remember we were in Missouri at my grandpa's house and my grandpa lived on this tiny little two-lane road that went through the woods for miles and we were there for Thanksgiving so a lot of family members were there at my grandpa's house all just hanging out and me and my cousins were out in the yard side yard playing football and we have I could tell stories just about the football games the epic football games that would just go on for a day and final score was like 200 to 180 you know whatever it was <laughs> and uh, we would hear my uncle driving in but we could hear him like an hour before he got there because he'd be rowing through these manual gearboxes trying to climb these hills and he was, wasn't even pulling a trailer just the truck itself you know back then the motors weren't as powerful and torquey and you'd have to take advantage of knowing how to drive an actual stick shift truck to give it the most power and torque to get up these back hills of the rolling roads of central Missouri and we could hear him coming and they would be like oh Uncle David's on his way he'll be here in about a half an hour yeah an hour was probably a bit of a stretch it was probably a 20 minutes you could hear him long before he got there. Just echoing through the hills, big truck, blah, 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 you know, coming up and down the hills. You could hear it coming and coming and coming. And it's just like, okay, when's he going to get here? When's he going to get here? <laughs> and then finally he shows up. And you're like, geez, they weren't exaggerating. He was, really was 20 minutes before he got there. You could hear him. But a uh, couple of trucking legacies in my family that could really be honored in this game. And it would, I just haven't figured out how to do it. I don't know how to mod. All it would take is a skin or two. I mean, one trucking skin that says the name of a trucking company with no graphics and my father-in-law's that had a little graphic. I don't remember if the graphic was on the truck. I know it was, on, it was only on the trailer, as far as I remember. Uh, the big Express Systems graphic, and then it just said Express Systems on the truck door. I do know that I've tried looking up the US dot numbers, and I haven't been able to find any uh, source that shows past assigned US DOT numbers, US DOT numbers. Um, the only thing I can find is the DOT lookups that are for current companies with the DOT number. It'd be cool if I was going to do a skin for like Express Systems if I could find their old US DOT number and actually use their number instead of just a made up one to make it look real. So if you know of a source for old DOT numbers, let me know so I can look them up. This uh, Arkansas DLC is pretty amazing, but it looks a lot like the other states. I actually have ties to Arkansas from family, so one of these days we'll talk about family connections to Arkansas. This is really just a just a video to get in and start doing some jobs in Arkansas. There's a logging achievement that you can do for the new Arkansas DLC, plus the, um, the event that comes with World of Trucks 
for every new state that's released. I kind of skipped a couple of states. I didn't do Nebraska or Kansas events. Just wasn't playing the game that much right then. I do love this game. I love that they're getting to the Midwest now where they're going to be doing some states that I have connections to. Like, my mom grew up in Arkansas. My dad grew up in Missouri. My mom, dad, brother, sister all went to college in Arkansas. We lived in Southern Illinois. My kids went to university in, in Iowa. Well, one wanted, one actually went. Just uh, lots of connections to the next few states. I hope that the SCS kind of works north and east across the country. Hopefully they get all the way to like... I just wonder how they're going to release the next few states. Obviously they're working on Missouri and Iowa right now. It sure seems like Illinois, Kentucky, and Tennessee would be the next ones, and then maybe Ohio and Virginia's. And then they could just start working sideways out northwest and southeast to kind of finish off the country. I wonder how long it'll take them to get the whole country done, but... I'm already betting that North and South Dakota will be released as one DLC. Um, I could be wrong about that. Those are big states. Uh, they are diverse enough, I think, that they could be separate states. But definitely when we get out east, they're going to be combining states for sure. Uh, you know, New Hampshire and Vermont are going to be so small that it makes sense to do those as one DLC release. I wonder actually how many states they'll release as one event. Well, maybe they'll just do a northeast release where it'll be Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Delaware, all those together. Maryland and Delaware seem like a good fit. They would go together. Everything north of New York is one DLC, since they're kind of smallish. Well, if you're going to give us the space there, dude, we're going to take it. In the past, I've just gotten on the shoulder and just whipped right by these guys, but I don't want to do that right now. Normally, I would just hop on the shoulder and ride right by those guys. That was kind of ridiculous for a car and a truck to sit in a slow lane like that, blocking traffic for no reason. I should say this, if you're involved in a crash and you can move the cars off the road, it's okay to move the cars off the road. I respond to these crashes sometimes and people think you have to leave the cars exactly where they are and they refuse to move. No, dip wad, get your car off the road so people can get to work. I will believe you when you tell me that the crash happened right over there and you point and there's a big debris field. You know, we know how to put two and two together to understand you don't have to leave your car in the road. Now that being said, if you're injured, yes, it's okay to leave your car in the road. If your car doesn't drive, it's okay to leave your car in the road. But if it's a minor fender bender and you can get off the road, just get off the stupid road. You don't have to block everyone else's day trying to get on with their commute to work just because you think the cops can't figure out where the crash happened, where the crash happened 50 feet away. Ugh. Anyways. I could probably do a hundred videos on the way that civilians should act when they interact with cops. I should do a video of that. I'll have to make up I'll have to make a list. Things that annoy me that people do as a cop. That's a pretty good one, actually. Maybe I will do that. I've never told anybody I'm a cop because I always tried to be private in my life. I don't want people to think this is a cop channel. There's a guy that has a YouTube channel that's really popular. It's like a cop that does farming sim game. I think it might be the only game he plays. I'm not sure, but his uh, YouTube logo is a tractor with the red and blue lights on the top of it. <laughs> I'm like, dang it, I wish I would have thought of that. That's funny and awesome. I won't even tell people I'm a cop, and he's got a freaking light bar on the top of his tractor. That's funny. Now that I'm getting close to retirement, I'm more a little bit more open about telling people I'm a cop. Like... People I went to school to go school with in high school, I, I don't tell I'm a cop. People get weird around cops. It's just kind of annoying. Like people think that they can't say that they ever committed a crime or I don't know what it is. It's just my dad was a preacher. It's the same kind of thing when people find out that you're a preacher. People just act differently around you and you don't want people to act differently just because of what you do for a living. You want people to be real. Just be yourself. Just be comfortable. I'm not a freaking I don't. I, I always say that I don't want my job to define who I am as a person. For me, it's just a job. I took that job because I wanted to be a truck driver, and guess what? Cops made more money, so I became a cop. I had the training already, so I just went and did it. 
Um, but there are a lot of funny stories about being a cop that are worth sharing. I could probably make a video just on the things that people do that are annoying. They think they're trying to help me, or maybe they've never dealt with a cop before, and they do these things that are super, super annoying, and I wish that people just knew a better way of doing things. And I don't blame people for doing things the wrong way. Most people in their lives have never dealt with a cop unless it's getting pulled over for speeding, and that's about it. You know, people don't understand how cops do things in the way we think, and they just react instinctively and sometimes it's the wrong thing to do I know I don't want to start talking about it because it'll it'll invoke me to start talking about those stories and we're only 24 minutes away from our arrival our spot that we're dropping off here so I don't want to get started but that would make a good video I sat down like every other day I sat down and started playing this game and literally wheels are rolling and I'm like I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about and when we left Hot Springs, Arkansas, I was thinking, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Don't talk about the book that my daughter gave me. That's the other profile. I just said something about my father-in-law giving me a job, and it turned into a whole video. Man, let's hop out and look. Let's look at the outside view while we're delivering this thing. See if I can make you guys love this game as much as I do. Probably not. I can't tell if there's a car in front of me. Whew. <laughs> this game has gotten so good. I, I'm i recording in 4K now. Um, like Over the last year, I've tried to in improve the quality of the recording that I've been doing for YouTube. So the first thing I did on the old computer was I upgraded to a better monitor. And... I was able to push a 2K signal. I was able to record in 2K, but it wasn't the quality that I wanted. So I finally upgraded to a 4K. I built a new computer. That was when I went, uh, I don't remember if I went to 2K on the old computer or the new computer. I definitely did 2K for a while on the new computer, um, starting in the fall of 23. But I just went to 4K. I bought one 4K monitor and now that's my source for the streaming, or for, the, for the recording capture. So I'm recording in 4K, playing in 4K, and I'm loving the quality of the videos in this game. I was actually watching a really popular YouTuber play this game, and his quality of his, his screen did not look as good as mine does for the picture quality. Now that could have been because I was watching it on a TV that... Oh, I was watching on a 4K TV. I just... For some reason, his signal quality was not as good as mine, and I'm like, I don't know if my computer is that much better or if I just care about it that much more, but he was doing like an introductory video to the Arkansas DLC, and it just didn't look as good as I thought it should be. And he had, I don't remember how many subscribers, but, you know, just imagine he had a lot because it was, I was impressed with whatever the number was. And, uh, I just thought his video quality should have been better. And I look at my video quality right in front of me while I'm sitting here today, and I'm just like, man, I just love the quality of the graphics in this game. Like, every little thing is impressive to me. Now, I am running about 20 mods on here. <laughs> I could probably do a short video just on the mods I run. Uh, but I've been trying to push my computer to glitch or stutter or freeze frame or something, and I just haven't found that limit yet. Yeah, okay, there we go. I don't want to play it safe. Oh, it says dynamic in parentheses. So if you're wondering how to get that. I saw a video where someone was asking, like, he didn't know which one to pick to get the dynamic loading and unloading scenes. It says right there, look for dynamic. That's the one you choose. Yeah, I got to go nose in. All right, boys and girls, here's your dynamic unloading of logs. Unloading in progress. A little bit of clipping. We can live with that. This game's awesome. I'll cut us some slack when I can. When it's unloading from the truck, obviously it clips into the grab the grabber. And the load stack on the trailer gets smaller. But when it drops them off onto the ground, the pile on the ground does not get bigger. Yeah. 
comparison to El Dorado. I thought I picked him up in Hot Springs. Maybe not. Anyways, that's my first logging job in Arkansas. I'll probably see a couple of these so I can earn that achievement on Steam. And then we'll move on with our trucking company and see what else we can find to do. Uh, I did want to grab a new type of trailer. I've never owned a logging trailer before, so you'll see a couple of these in a row coming up. I'm Old Guy Gamer. This is American Truck Sim. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel help to help me become a full-time gamer in retirement. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. You guys go watch some more videos. I'll go play some more games. Bye.